All right, let's get started. I'm going to be using Crazy Taxi for this example. Let me attach to it real quick. So the first thing you want to enable in settings is mem mapped. This is the most important part. I also like to scan for mem image since you might find values there as well for some emulators like Dolphin or Yuzu, but it's not, not necessary. Enable this option only if you can't find the value you're looking for without it, as it does make the scanning a bit slower. We're also going to enable the big endian types. I think both Dolphin and New Jinx use big endian types. Basically, the most significant byte is on the other side. It's on the opposite side instead, but don't worry about that. One more thing. I also recommend changing the all type to also include those other extra custom types as well. It's going to come in very useful in a second. All right, let me set up the game and show you the way I like to scan for values in emulators. Let's try, let's try to modify the time. I'm going to tell you now, if we try scanning directly for 258 as an int or to whatever as a float, we're just not going to get anything. This applies to most values in most emulator games. You won't find the exact value you see on the screen. This is why I like scanning for a known initial value with the all types. If the, if the scans take too long because the game is too big, you can always reduce the number of types included and scan for less at a time, sort of like a batching system. This is where hotkeys come in handy, so you can do this a lot faster while playing the game. I usually like to do the crease value for minus and increase value to equal, but you know, do whatever works for you. As you can see, it takes forever, even with a small game like Crazy Taxi, so I recommend either doing type by type or changing the amount of types in the all scan like I said before. Alright, you get to see my amazing driving for a second. So now we're just going to keep decreasing the value each, each time the time goes down. Eventually it, it should go a lot faster, but the first couple scans are usually the longest. Alright, there we go. We can finally we can finally start scanning really fast now that it's the values found is a lot smaller. So you can see we're stuck at 142. It just doesn't go down because all the values are decreasing randomly. So we can just make an assumption and assume our value is gonna be more than zero. Sometimes you just have to make these guesses. So there we go. We got 21, I'm gonna do this a couple times just to make sure. All those random values are out. Then we can see what values make sense. So this, these two values look really similar. So I'm just going to pick these two, two smallest ones. And let me try it out. Oh, there we go. We found the time. But we also have another one that's exactly the same. But if we look at the address, we see that one starts at 10, one starts at 12. Those are the two extra bytes from the other one. So we can just assume the value is stored in a four byte big endian. And, but that's it. I hope that helps. Uh, I'll put resources in the description if you want more information on this. And yeah, thanks for watching.